What's up guys, Learning with Rich here. In this video, I'm going to show you how to add walls in our floor plan view, okay? So after we open the project, so let's add wall here. So it's a basic one. So we are just going to add wall to this rectangular uh, shape of our drawing. This is actually an AutoCAD drawing. So if you are having a difficulty like this one, you can select your, your AutoCAD drawing. Okay, you can control the selection of your CAD drawing or your uh, link model or imported uh, model by using the tools that you have here. So you have here uh, select links, uh, select underlay elements, select pinned elements, and then you have here select elements by face. The reason why I can't select these CAD drawing it's because this CAD drawing is actually pinned and then this tool here is disabled select pinned elements is disabled so if I'm going to enable this I will be able to select my link model or my imported model that is pinned so as you can see it's pinned so that's why if you do not want to accidentally select your pinned elements or pin model so you can just disable this by doing that you will not be able to select your pinned elements it also applies to your model elements such as your walls your grids or other uh, model elements in your project okay so that is what will happen if you're going to pin it and then if you're going to disable this so if you want to select that just enable this again and then you will now be able to select it okay now let me just disable this again so I do not want to accidentally move that imported CAD model now let's create here a wall basic wall okay no fancy walls here just create a rectangular wall and that's it okay so the wall tool here can be found on the architecture tab and then you can see here the wall so you have several options here to create your wall so you have wall architectural wall structural and wall by face okay for this one we are going to use here wall architectural okay so it creates a non-structural wall in the building model so i'm going to select this one the shortcut of this is w okay so just click that and then here on the modify place wall contextual tab so you can see the draw panel here so these are the tools that you can use to shape up your walls okay and obviously the shape of this wall that we will be creating is rectangle so that's why I'm gonna select your rectangle and another thing before you create your wall you can specify here on the type selector what type of wall that you will be using okay so for this exercise I'll be using generic 150 mm okay and another thing that you need to consider when creating your wall is the option here so you can specify if it is based on height or based on the depth if it is based on height so make sure if you are going to select here the level make sure the level that you will be using is uh, higher than ground floor because you are selecting here height if you are going to select your depth, okay, make sure that the level that you will be selecting here is lower than your current level, lower than your ground floor. So if you are going to check here the elevation, like for example, the south elevation. So let's check out the levels here. So we have several levels here. So we have the ground floor and then below the ground floor, you have the top of footing. So above the ground floor, you have the main floor, lower roof, main roof, and then top of uh, parapet. So don't worry, I'm going to show you how to create uh, levels on our uh, future videos. Okay. Now, here we have several levels. So you can use these levels to specify the height of your wall. So going back to my ground floor here. If I'm going to select the wall, if you're going to select depth and then you're going to specify here the level, so make sure it is lower than your current level, which is ground floor. So you are going to select top of parapet. Oh, sorry, top of footing. So you can select that one. Okay. 
So if you create a wall, for example, rectangular wall from this point up to this point, okay, I can't see that currently because of the view range. Again, I'll be showing you how to modify your view range later on. So the wall is already created. It's just the view range is not yet set. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select modify and then let's check out our elevation again, south elevation. So here, okay, I can't see here my my wall, but I'm going to change my view to the 3D view, and that's now my wall. So if I click the wall, so as you can see here, our base constraint is top of footing, and then our top constraint here is ground floor. So this is the lowest part, the top of footing, and then the other one, the top constraint is the highest part, with this, uh, which is the ground floor. So you can uh, create your wall like that. So let me just undo it. Set up wall. So let me go back again to ground floor. Now, let's select again the wall tool, uh, generic 150 rectangle. This time, I'm going to specify here by height. So if you're going to select height, so make sure the height, that you are going to select here if you want to select level make sure it's higher than the ground floor so it can be the lower roof it can be the main floor main roof uh, top of parapet or you can also specify unconnected if you select unconnected you can specify here the height like for example the default is a thousand so if you want to connect that up to main floor so you can just select main floor so you cannot change this anymore because it is already set from ground floor to main floor but i'm going to show you how to change the top uh, offset later on so let's say for example i'm going to create from ground floor to main floor okay so let's click here one two and then let's select here modify Again, let's go uh, to the elevation view, south elevation. Okay, I can't. Oh, there you go. So there's now my wall here. So let me change the visual style, shaded. So that's the wall that I just created. So let me go to the 3D view, and that's the wall. So again, if I click the wall, you can see the property here. That's the base constraint, the lower part. The base constraint is ground floor and then the top constraint is main floor. So let's say, for example, you want to add an additional, let's say, 500 mm above the main floor. You can do that by specifying the top offset. You can change that to, let's say, 500 and then enter. So as you can see, it's now added here. Okay, so you can use the top offset and base offset uh, property to further modify the height of your wall so let's say from the base constraint of ground floor you still want to go down your wall from the ground floor so you can specify here a value make sure it's negative to go down if it is positive this base constraint of ground floor it will go up okay so let's say this is uh, minus 500 and then I will just click inside to apply as you can see there's now your 500 from uh, ground floor so let's say you want to move that up 500 from the ground floor just make this positive okay and then apply and there you go okay so basically that's how you play your uh, properties for the wall so let me just uh, select again this walls here so I'm gonna delete that let me go back again to ground floor okay so I'm gonna select here wall okay and then I'm gonna select rectangle again so another option that you can uh, use here aside from the height here let me just make this unconnected and then specify the height 8000 so aside from this option height you can also specify here the location line so you can specify the uh, justification where your pointer will gonna be located at when you create your uh, wall okay because there are walls that contains different layers like for example you see this stack wall here if I select that one and then if I check the type properties 
and then I check the structure as you can see I have here two layers so I have uh, brick with a variable height and then exterior block with the 900 height if I check the preview here so this is how it looks like okay so when you create this wall you can specify the location of your pointer before you create the wall that is the justification so let me just cancel this let me show you what i mean so if you want to specify your pointer at the wall center line of this wall you can select your wall center line and then let me just create line here let me just create it here so as you can see that's the wall center line justification as you can see my pointer is at the center line right so I'm gonna escape once. So this time let's use, let's say uh, interior finish face. So let's click that. So let's see how it looks like. So click, so as you can see the pointer or the cursor is now located at the finish face interior, okay? So meaning to say this area here is the finish face. So this location line, when you create your wall, it depends on how many layers that you have on your wall. So of course, if you are just going to use here uh, your generic model, it contains only one layer. So you can just use here wall center line, uh, finish face exterior or finish face interior. Because uh, core face exterior and core face interior is just the same as this finish face here. So as you can see, if I select finish face exterior, so that's the justification. So that this is the exterior area, escape once. So if I select here uh, core face exterior, it's just the same, right? So the pointer, it's just the same there. Okay. Right. So the other one here is core face interior. So as you can see the justification, if I'm going to select here finish face interior, it's just the same. Right? Because it only contains one layer of wall, but if you are going to create a wall type with several layers so this location line will gonna be play an important role before you create or as you create your wall okay well anyway uh, let me just delete this one and then let's just create a simple wall here to complete our exercise so let me create a rectangular wall architectural 8000 I'll just use here finish face exterior rectangle and just 150 and then let me just create from this point to this point here there you go okay and then modify now um, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna create another wall here okay so let's say I'll create another wall so this time I'm gonna use line tool and I'm going to uncheck here the chain tool. Chain tool, this is useful if you're going to create a continuous uh, wall. Like for example, if I click here, if I click another point, you will notice the the wall will going to, will not it will not going to stop, right? You'll be able to create wall continuously because the chain is on. But if you're going to uncheck this one, once I pick the second point here, it will gonna be terminated so this is useful you can uncheck the chain tool if you want to only create one segment of wall meaning you only pick two points one two it will terminate but if you're going to check the chain you'll be, you'll be able to create chain of walls like that all right okay all right so let me just delete this again select delete Okay, so let's select the wall tool, wall. Okay, let me just uncheck the chain here. And let me just create a wall here. So from this point up to this point. 
Okay, as you can see, there is this dimension that appearing every time you create your wall, right? So that is a temporary dimension. Temporary means if you select modify or if you press escape on your keyboard, it will disappear. So it will only appear again if you're going to click the wall, right? So every element, it has a temporary dimension that you can use to change or modify the distance of your wall. So like for example, I'm gonna select this wall here. I'm gonna click this temporary dimension. So let's say I want this to be 15,000. And then enter. So as you can see, you'll be able to change the distance of your wall. And you see that blue dot there? You can change the uh, location of your witness line. So every time you click that, it changes the justification. So that let's say, for example, what you want is you want to change the, the wall justification. So you can change the witness line. So let's say from that face of the wall to this face of the wall, I want that to be, uh, let's say, 13,000. Enter. There you go. Okay. So that is your temporary dimension. And that's it for this simple exercise. On our next video, I'm going to show you how to create and modify uh, levels. Okay, so hopefully you learned something from this video. Thank you for watching. Have a nice day.